Mainstream TV viewers often overlook horror, but American Horror Story managed to seduce an audience all its own. Here's a look behind the scenes into what it took to bring the beloved anthology series to the small screen. Before American Horror Story debuted in 2011, co-creator Ryan Murphy was best known as one of the minds behind Glee, a show so happy and positive that it was literally about a bunch of high school kids gaining self-esteem by singing and dancing to familiar pop songs. Murphy then went directly from his high school musical to a house full of ghosts, violence, and a rubber man. What happened? Who hurt you, Ryan? In an interview with Elle, Murphy admitted, I was like, I can't write any more nice speeches for these glee kids about love and tolerance and togetherness. To that end, he wrote a show about horror and depravity instead. American Horror Story also allowed Murphy to write a glee wrong. It wanted Sarah Paulson to play Emma Pillsbury the high school guidance counselor eventually portrayed by Jamer Mays. Paulson was unable because she was starring in a Broadway play at the time. Murphy finally found a place for Paulson as medium Billy Dean Howard, the first of many memorable AHS roles she would step into. So much pain here. So much longing and regret. While occasionally campy and darkly funny, most every season of American Horror Story gets pretty bleak pretty quickly. I mean, just because you got 30 bodies buried in your crawl space don't mean you can't have a really terrific rec room and be a respectable businessman. Playing murderers and their victims can really get under the skin of the actors, so a few have tried to relieve the tension when possible. Zachary Quinto took on a major role in Asylum as Oliver Threadson, another role he accepted on set music therapist, playing his banjo on set to lighten the mood. Lily Rabe plays guitar in real life, and should play to provide musical breaks on tough days too. Yeah, musical breaks. It was it's it was good. Zach is better at the banjo than I am at the guitar for sure. Jessica Lang, the grand dame of American Horror Story, convinced Ryan Murphy to put one of those melodic palate cleansers into the show itself. After a flashback revealed that her asylum character had once been a singer in a band, Lang suggested a full-on fantasy musical sequence in the middle of a psychiatric institution, set to the classic 60s novelty song The Name Game. If only because, as she told Vulture, everything we do is so grim. Before it was cancelled in 2017, Scream Queens, Ryan Murphy's other other show, was the place where the blood and gore of American Horror Story met the comedy of Glee. For instance, its first season asked the burning question, how might a cast made up of self-absorbed sorority girls and dumb frat guys deal with a costumed serial killer roaming their college campus? Good evening, idiot hookers. I'm very happy to welcome you to Hell Week here at Kappa House. It was also laced with references to classic slasher movies, tongue-in-cheek horror movie tropes, and it even starred Halloween's Jamie Lee Curtis in a major role. While that may all sound pretty standard for the guy who conjured up the dead breakfast club, Scream Queens nearly had even more in common with American Horror Story. Just how much, you ask? Well, it was almost a spin-off of Coven, the AHS season set at a school for young witches in New Orleans. Surprise, I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. However, Murphy changed his mind after a lunch with Fox executives, explaining, We were talking about things that we loved that were not on the air, things that we loved growing up, movies that we loved watching. Once the subject of slasher movies came up, Scream Queen's own unique identity began to take shape. And while its ride was a short one, it sure was a blast while it lasted. In the months before the sixth season of American Horror Story premiered in 2016, FX released more than 20 teasers, each suggesting a totally different theme. At a Television Critics Association event, FX CEO John Landgraf explained that only one of them accurately represented the season, while the rest were misdirects. Though wildly different, the trailers did share a few things in common. All of them were creepy, weird, and pretty damn unsettling, perhaps none more so than the one that showed a woman using some some hedge clippers to snip wind chimes made from human teeth. Turns out that was a real trailer, as that imagery figures into American Horror Story, Roanoke. In a way though, all of the fake trailers were real. That season of the show explored the notions of real and fake. As the plot centered in part on a couple who lived in a haunted house near the lost colony of Roanoke, and the TV show's recreations of the events they endured at the hands of the ghostly Roanoke colonists. 
In American Horror Story Hotel, Evan Peters portrayed Mr. March, who turned out to be arguably the most super evil character in the show's long list of super evil characters. I look around and I see the definition of American success. Why? Well, because he trapped, tortured, and killed people in the Hotel Cortez. Duh. It's quite upsetting then that, according to Ryan Murphy in Entertainment Weekly, Mr. March is based on a real person. That individual is H.H. H. Holmes, who, during the Chicago World's Fair in 1893, opened and ran a Hotel of Horrors. Visitors to the Great Exposition who tragically chose to stay at Holmes' hotel would find their rooms soundproofed and windowless, all the better for Holmes to take them out via gassing or other means. Secret passageways allowed him to remove bodies to the basement without detection, where he'd destroy the evidence in a furnace. He was caught in 1894 and executed two years later. In addition to legendary Oscar winners like Jessica Lange and Kathy Bates, American Horror Story has made stars of up-and-comers like Emma Roberts and Evan Peters and proved to the world long before a star is born that Lady Gaga could act. It's hard to believe that some performers couldn't or didn't want to be involved with the top-rated show. Chris Zilka booked a two-episode stint on Asylum as a deaf man, but a few months later he exited because he didn't want to shave his head, a requirement of the role. Ryan Murphy has also dutifully pursued a few Dreamcast members, albeit unsuccessfully. Among the targets he has revealed, Michelle Pfeiffer, Michael Chiklis, and Reese Witherspoon. Talking about the latter to Entertainment Weekly, Murphy said, I wanted her to play something really twisted and effed up, but she's always booked. Neil Patrick Harris and his husband, David Burtka, appeared in Freak Show, although Murphy earlier pursued the couple for Murder House. He wanted them to portray the bickering pair, ultimately played by Zachary Quinto and Teddy Sears. Harris explained to Rolling Stone why they skipped out on the part, referring to the couple's roles in A Very Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas. We had just played ourselves as a couple not getting along. I thought, it just seems weird to do that twice, as individual actors to play a couple that hate each other twice, so I said no, that we shouldn't do it. The eighth season of American Horror Story, dubbed Apocalypse, tied together characters from multiple seasons in the ultimate crossover event to face the ultimate evil. Michael Langdon, the offspring of Satan, the Antichrist. In the sixth episode of the story, Return to Murder House, viewers learn that Michael realizes his evil abilities in full after a visit from Anton LaVey and his top lieutenants, who ritually and brutally sacrifice a woman, remove her beating heart, and give it over to the young embodiment of true evil to feast upon. It was a deeply upsetting scene for many viewers, but in a different way for the real-life Church of Satan. Anton LaVey was a real person who really did found the Church of Satan and wrote several books espousing the beliefs of the 10,000-strong organization. Present-day Church of Satan leaders objected to the portrayal of the church on American Horror Story, tweeting about their disapproval in October 2018 and pointing out the inaccuracies in the adaptation. When Ryan Murphy talked to The Hollywood Reporter regarding Sarah Paulson's portrayal of Bette and Dot Tatler during the fourth season of American Horror Story, he couldn't hold back his overwhelming praise, saying, It's absolutely the most challenging thing I've ever seen any actor do, ever. It was really terrifying, as you might imagine. I didn't know how in the world we were going to do it, and um, it's a really scary thing to, to act by yourself. The dual role found Paulson playing conjoined twins with two heads and one body, living in a traveling sideshow on American Horror Story Freak Show. It was also one of the most challenging things the show's special effects artists ever had to attempt. It required a lot of old-fashioned trickery, labor, and digital manipulation for Paulson to convincingly play both characters. First, the effects team took a mold of Paulson's own head and used it to build two sophisticated prosthetic heads. As Murphy explained, so when Sarah is doing her coverage where she's Dot, she has on a fake head to her left, which is Bet, and it moves. She literally has to do scenes with herself. Those scenes took as long as 15 hours to shoot, because everything with the Tatlers had to be filmed for close-up, in medium shots, for effects, and from various angles, twice. American Horror Story Freak Show takes place in Florida among the denizens of one of the few remaining Cabinet of Curiosities shows in 1952. A highlight of the season is the recurring motif of anachronistic music from musicians like Nirvana and David Bowie, meaning characters set in the show's world of the early 50s sing very famous songs recorded decades later. Ryan Murphy explained that the songs were carefully selected for Freak Show, and for good reason. As he explained, 
We decided we only were going to highlight musical artists who at some point in their career had identified themselves as feeling like freaks or misfits or outcasts, which our people are going through. American Horror Story Hotel took inspiration in part from the ghastly horrors committed by H.H. H. Holmes and seemingly from something more modern and ambiguous as well. The Hotel Cortez is loosely based on the Cecil Hotel, a structure in the Skid Row area of downtown Los Angeles that's hosted countless tourists and transients, as well as murderers and mysteries. Austrian serial killer Jack Unterweger resided at the hotel for a while, as did Richard Ramirez, the murderer known as the Night Stalker. He's even a character in American Horror Story Hotel. The one incident that really moved the needle for American Horror Story creator Ryan Murphy was the story of Elisa Lam. As explored in the 2021 Netflix documentary, Crime Scene, The Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel, Canadian student Lam stayed at the Cecil during a trip to Los Angeles in 2013, only to disappear. An internet-driven manhunt ensued, especially after the release of a bizarre surveillance video of Lam acting erratically in a Cecil Hotel elevator. A few days later, Lam's body was discovered in a rooftop water tank. Murphy summed up the puzzling circumstances at a Television Critics Association event in August 2015. A girl got in an elevator in a downtown hotel. She was never seen again. The sinister-sounding, postmodern opening sequence for American Horror Story seems tailor-made for the show. A combination of spooky, forbidding, and hypnotic musical themes punctuated by jarring jump-scare sounds. Surprisingly, the bulk of it comes from a 20-year-old class project. Back in 1998, Cesar Davila Izari was a sophomore at the University of Puerto Rico. For a music history class, he created a primitive digital audio track using Cool Edit 96 on his Windows 98 computer, stretching, mixing, and combining various sounds with white noise. For example, the song's first dissonant moment comes from a clip of Davila Azari dropping wire hangers on a tile floor. When he was done, Davila Azari gave it to his friend, Gabriel Diaz, who went on to work as a video editor on the first season of American Horror Story. He used Davila Azari's track as a placeholder, but producers liked it so much they decided to keep it. For technical and legal reasons, show composer Charlie Clouser of Nine Inch Nails recreated and spruced it up with Davila Azari's blessing. Apart from a couple of appearances as Church of Satan Cardinal Samantha Crow in the Apocalypse season, actor Naomi Grossman left her mark on the American Horror Story franchise in the second season, Asylum Story. She portrayed Pepper, a woman who suffers from microcephaly, which means someone having a smaller than normal head. She also possesses many other notable physical traits such as large ears, jutting teeth, a mostly shaved pate, and a topknot. Grossman is almost unrecognizable as Pepper, and her physical transformation into the character for each episode of Asylum was a long and involved process, with Grossman telling Entertainment Weekly, the entire process takes about two and a half to three hours, and that's with two men working the entire time. Freckles and veins were drawn on Grossman's skin, and then came extensive prosthetics which included a forehead complete with punched-in eyebrows, a nose, ears, and even a bumpy little spine piece for my back. Grossman was also outfitted for a set of false teeth, which altered the shape of her mouth and face. Grossman additionally revealed that she couldn't even use one of her eyes thanks to a lens she had to wear. Songs recorded by Fleetwood Mac, as well as that band's Stevie Nicks, permeate the soundtracks of multiple American Horror Story seasons. That's logical, as Nicks has long been associated with witches, dark spirits, and other spooky stuff that's abundant in the Ryan Murphy horror anthology. Nyx's bewitching presence is felt most strongly in the third American Horror Story, subtitled Coven, where Lily Rabe plays a witch who deeply loves Nyx's music even before she finds out the singer is an actual practicing witch, too. Nyx makes a cameo late in the season, and it was tough for American Horror Story producers to make it happen. Nyx was friendly with AHS creators Ryan Murphy and Brad Falchuk, having lent a hand on a Fleetwood Mac tribute episode of their series Glee. For American Horror Story, Nyx told the Los Angeles Times that the creators asked if they could use her music again, and when they explained that her songs were an integral aspect of the lonely character Misty Day, Nyx acquiesced. When Murphy asked her to appear, she was terrified at first. She had a terrible time acting in a fourth grade play and had, quote, vowed to stay away from acting forever. This shawl has danced across the stages of the world, and now it's yours. And good luck with the Seven Wonders. Each year, the story, setting, and characters are different, but the actors remain the same. 
From the beginning of the American Horror Story anthology concept, creator Ryan Murphy has utilized a collective of performers, with many of them dutifully returning for each successive season. However, when it came time to shoot season 9, 1984, Murphy had to make do without the use of some of his most venerable actors. For example, Evan Peters starred in eight seasons, then left the show, citing burnout and an aversion to getting typecast in horror roles. Sarah Paulson also appeared in each of the first eight tales, and Jessica Lange bowed out after four seasons, then had a small role reprising cameo in the eighth season, which tied together several different, disparate American horror stories together. It also involved a large number of actors, which stretched FX's budget, with FX CEO John Landgraf telling The Wrap it was a monster in terms of the size of the cast, cost of that cast. According to Landgraf, Murphy had to quote, clean the slate, start over. When American Horror Story 1984 debuted, it boasted a cast composed mostly of new and latter-day rivals to the franchise. After the soft reboot of American Horror Story was announced in the form of an 80s horror movie-influenced season called 1984, a series fan and video editor named Corey Vega made a preemptive cut of what he thought the upcoming episode's opening credit sequence ought to look like. In short, Vega thought it should look extremely 80s. He put together a rapid-fire clip montage that included shots of aerobics instructors, neon-colored cars, moonwalking, and neon graphics. And because it's supposed to be an American Horror Story clip, lots of blood and gore permeated it all. The video spread around the internet until it reached a very influential figure, co-creator and producer Ryan Murphy. Murphy wrote on Instagram that he was such a fan of the edit that he hired Vega to recreate his video with AHS titles designer Kyle Cooper to use in 1984. Lots of people have a fear of clowns, known as colrophobia. It must be something about their frozen, exaggerated, and untrustworthy grins, or how their identity is concealed under white face paint. American Horror Story aptly exploited those fears in its freak show season, featuring John Carroll Lynch as the monstrous Twisty the Clown, who isn't so much a children's party entertainer as a guy who kills people with scissors and locks kids in an old school bus. Perhaps, unsurprisingly, this subplot upset some real-life clowns, as Clowns of America president Glenn Kohlberger said in a response to Freak Show in 2014, Hollywood makes money sensationalizing the norm. They can take any situation, no matter how good or pure, and turn it into a nightmare. We do not support in any way, shape, or form any medium that sensationalizes or adds to colrophobia. The protests flared up again in 2017 when American Horror Story Cult once again featured evil clowns. World Clown Association President Pam Moody told the Detroit Free Press, The role of a clown persona, regardless of their style of clowning, is meant to bring joy and laughter, to bring humor to a hurting world. 